Ready? I'm, I'm here now with Martin Murray uh, in Oliver's gym to uh, talk about his uh, previous fight with Felix Sturm and to talk about what lies in the future for Martin. Uh, Martin, just starting off by uh, asking about the Felix Sturm fight. Um, asking how you felt looking back now, it went for you. Is there anything that you could have taught maybe looking back that you failed on that you could have capitalised on to, to, to Yeah, I mean, score? you know, it was my first time at that level. Um, second time I'd gone 12 rounds, so we didn't want to exert myself too much and get stopped later on, so I was reserving that bit of energy like, but it's, um, it was one of them, I didn't know how I was going to feel until I got up there, I got up there, I felt good, I was warming into it well and you know, as the rounds were going on, I realised that it was there for the second, if I did fight him again, I definitely, you know, I wouldn't say exert a bit more energy because if I could have done anything different up there I would, but I'd, uh, you know, just stay in the attacks a bit more. No, it felt like, I don't know whether it was or it wasn't, but it felt like you had a very long training camp. It felt like yeah. the fight was forever made. Yeah. Because you were already in training before it was announced. That's and right, then yeah. you had the nearly eight weeks before it was announced. Yeah. No. Do you think it, it Twelve, was? Twelve, I think. Twelve, was it? Yeah. yeah, a long time. So it was a long training camp. Do you think maybe <coughs> too long? Uh, no, definitely not too long, no. I mean, th th there was, th the training camp overall was 16 week because we, we didn't know we was fighting at that uh, on in December. We was originally getting set for uh, October, November, no, October it was. So, you know, um, you know the tr we, we was already in training as, as, as the fight got announced, but after eight weeks, I started, you know, I started feeling sharp, everything, everything was the eight week training. But I was only halfway through my training camp then, so Oliver told me I have a couple of days off, brought it back down to scratch, and you know, we built from there. So it definitely wasn't too long. I'm training now till till April. I think I'm fighting, and that's going to be roughly around about the same time. If I thought it was too long, I wouldn't have been in the gym now. You know, I'm just ticking over now and stepping up my training. So I think 16 week was right, but you can do it in eight, ten, no problem. Yeah. Now, um, you, you, as you said earlier on, you went from fighting Nick Blackwell on a domestic level for domestic titles straight yeah. into fighting for a world title against one of the pound for pound best boxers in that division. Yeah. Um, one thing you would have noticed stepping from domestic to the world level would have been the media attention. Uh, yeah. It would have been chaos, like 24-7 around you. Uh, how did you deal with that? There was obviously a different thing that you wouldn't have been experienced before, you know, more cameras and interviews. And so yeah, on. I mean, I, I've, got a, I've, got, I've got a great management team. My manager's a cracking fellow and, he, you know, everything goes through him. So, he kind of like, the week before the fight, he cuts everything dead. But leading up to it, you, you don't mind it at all. You know, you appreciate people like yourself, the press giving you an exposure. So, you know, it didn't bother me at all. But when we got over Germany, it, it, it was a massive thing over there. He's like a superstar over there. So that was that was completely new to me. But I was enjoying it. You know, there was no pressure on me. I was at the there and I'm fighting. When the fight did actually come along, when I was in that ring, I was happy that it was here. Like you just said, I trained 16 weeks for it, so I was happy that the fight was finally here. And it, it, you know. The, the media attention, it, it just kind of like opened my eyes to what, what lies for me there in the future, so it didn't bother me at all. That's what I wanted to say next was, um, after having that exposure at, uh, on that level, and also fighting on a world level scene, surely now going back to fighting maybe domestically or, or whatever may lie ahead of you, it must be hard to, to, to do that. Like, you know, obviously you want to stay on the world level. Now. Yeah, I'm, I'm there now, I'm, I'm up there, I'm on that world level. I know what you're saying about going back to British, but there's some great fights over here for me. If I can't get some fights sorted, you know, world level, there's world class fighters over here who I'd like to fight. You know, Don and Barker's a world class fighter. I think me and him would make for a, a brilliant fight. And uh, you know, depending on what happens with Macklin and Martinez, you know, so we go from there. But I know what you're saying coming back down down to British, but. It, it don't matter who I fight, I'll always train as if they're a world champion, I always have done so. That won't affect me, whoever or whenever my next fight is. Uh, so, the, the, as regards to your British and uh, Commonwealth title, uh, you haven't given them up yet? And obviously no, I mean, I'm giving the, giving the uh, Commonwealth up. I'm keeping all the British, obviously, because we, we, do, we don't know what's happening. We don't know whether I'm going to get another shot at someone else. We have been pushing for the Stern fight, but he's, you know, he, he's not playing ball. Verdi's fighting Andy Lee. I don't know what the truth is in that, but um, yeah, what was that about then? No, I was just saying with the Commonwealth British time. Yeah, so, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so I've, I've, I've given the Commonwealth thought, but I've kept the British because um, 
you know, it, it's a bit of re reassurance for me. It's just there for me if I, if I need be. So I've just got to wait and see what unfolds. But I'm giving the Commonwealth Cup and keeping all of me British. Now you just said there about Stern, man. You're not sure what's going on at the moment. He, if I was right, I did read a statement somewhere that he had released that the rematch was already signed, sealed, and it was April 13th that it was happening and everything. <coughs> um, no, what happened was be, before the fight, when we first signed for the fight, when you signed the contract, the rematch was already in there. So we knew all the conditions of, of, of what happened, you know, if there was a rematch. I was under the impression that if it had beat him, definitely if it had drew as well, that we'd have a rematch. You know, if the, if it was a close fight, then you know it, it's up to him whether he put the rematch or not. But I, like I said, I was under the impression if it was a draw or a win for me, that we'd have a rematch. But but he's not. I know he's put a date out there for thirteenth for his next fight, and he, he's not one to mention me. So uh, you know, I'm uh, not I'm gutted because you know I, I was banking on that fight. I really do believe I can beat him. But I've heard Andy Lee's Andy Lee's getting it now, and you know, and, and uh, you know, I had a decent if it. Uh, contact me over Twitter where, when I was uh, fighting Sturm, wishing me luck. So if he does get the fight, I wish him best of luck. And what's your opinion on Sturm himself? I mean, here's a guy that, uh, let's be honest about it, he fought Macklin, and Macklin stepped straight from domestic level into the world level scene. And then he's, he stepped up, he's fought yourself, you stepped straight from Blackwell into the world level scene. Yeah. And now it looks like he's going down the middle route and he's going from Andy Lee in the <coughs> same situation. Yeah. I mean, they say this guy is one of the best guys in the division and he's this, and as you say, yeah. he's a superstar in Germany. It doesn't really sound like a superstar to me. It sounds like, you know, he's, he's picking out lads that are yeah, his own appeal there, you know? Yeah, I mean? he is. I mean, he, he, he's picked with Bo, like he did with Macklin, like he did with me, and like he's going to do with Andy Lee. Um, he, you know, he, he, he's picking lads who we think he can beat, and he's getting hard fights. You know, there's no, I know you said we've set up from domestic to, to world level, but there's no two ways about it that I, I was always world class. It was just that I had to stay on domestic because I wasn't getting anywhere. Was in uh, as in terms of world class fight, and same with Macklin and the lead the world class fighters. So he, he he's just picking them, thinking that they're going to be an easy fight. But like like I just said, it wasn't an easy fight. Me it wasn't with Macklin at all. It no. won't be with Andy Lee. But if he was a so called champion, he, he he should be coming out and he'd be maybe defend his title in Britain against you. Like you're yeah, against I mean, well, obviously, ideally, mm. that, that's what you'd want because you've got more chance of getting a decision, obviously, at home. But. Um, People said this to me, but I said to him, he, he's in Germany. He's like a he's like a mega star over there, and he's selling arenas out. He's earning absolute millions. He's on his own promotions, and there's no way he's going to come out. He's got that reassurance of the judges and, and everything over there. So I, I don't think you know he's just looking after himself basically, and it's not it's not broke for him. So so he's, you know there's no need to fix it. And just finally on the Sturm situation, I remember talking to you last time in an interview when I asked you about going to Germany and how you felt and yeah. at the time you were upbeat and you didn't mind and yeah. whatever. But do you think just some element out there where they're protecting him and protecting him and his title in the judges' sense of the thing? Uh, I, I mean, mean, for instance, just for you, for, I mean, you have to box two and a half minutes where he can box 30 seconds. Yeah, oh, that, that is shocking, no two words about do it. Do you think, like, is yeah. it just silly at this stage? Though? Well, I, I think it is. You, you can't fight for 30 seconds of a round and win it. I don't care who no. you are. It, it just doesn't work and it shouldn't work. Yeah. And people are now watching him fight and looking for them bursts and thinking, oh, he won the fight because he did yeah. that. that. That shouldn't happen. It shouldn't happen. I mean, boxing's full of politics. We all know that. And I don't know what the score is or why he's over there. But there's no two ways about it. He's, you know, he, he's on the slide. Boxing's about time. And I want to do that because I really do believe I can take him in. Like I just said, if it's Andy Lee, I think Andy Lee's got a great chance of beating him. And I wish him all the best. You said Barker earlier on, um, he's fighting now uh, a couple of weeks' time, I think March 17th, and um, apparently, from what I've heard, his promoter already her and has made an offer to your promoter. <coughs> um, it's just like shooting, I don't know, but yeah. that's a fight you would take, is it? Eddie Hearn has made an offer. Mm -hmm. um, he made two. He made an offer, and then we made him a, a bigger offer, and then he said, no, he can't work with that. And it wasn't like it was. It wasn't like it wasn't a good increase on his offer, it was. And then he said he can't work with that. Then he's put a second offer that matched our first. And then, you know, he's going on waiting for air back for you. But he, he's only offered us what we've offered him. Right. Do you know what I mean? And he's saying he can't work with it. So how does he expect us to work with it? Right, so he's you know, but there. yeah, I mean, it, it's stupid and it's tip the tap. But I've got a great promotional team with, with that promotions. And Richard Potts is doing a great job of the matchmaker. He's sorting me some fights, and I'm pretty sure that this fight can get sorted. It's a fight that I want. 
and like I said, hopefully it can get sorted. I think it's going to be great for the British public. And, you know, great for you. Need a title, you? Well, there you go, exactly. But, I mean, like I've told people, there's no point. I mean, it's easier for me now because I'm on that level, just like Barker, Macklin, I'm on the same level as them now. So it's easy, I could just say, oh, well, I mean, you know, I can go beyond that. But I don't want to. I think all three of us need, just need to, there's no point to all three of us going different directions when we can all fight each other. There's no point. I think there's great, great, three great fights. I want to be involved in good fights. I want to look back at my career set while I was involved in that fight, it's a good fight, and, and that's what I want. So hopefully the fights can get made. There was one thing Eddie Hearn pointed out last week in a press conference with Brooklyn uh, Hatton, where he said that these two guys are chasing the, the world titles and we're yeah. in the same division, the same country. Yeah. As regards to they can fight each other, and then the world knows it's only who's the best one in it. There you go. Yeah. You, Barker, and Macklin are in the same boat. I mean, given what that's what happened with Macklin and Martinez, yeah. the three dudes need to find out now uh, who I is mean, the best I, one yeah. and give that fella the opportunities on the world level. I mean, I'm game. I know it's boxing, and obviously there's, there's going to be a loser, and, and you know, a, a loss to a boxer, you know, it's a massive thing, and it, it knocks him down loads of levels. Or, or, but the thing is, it's just that's the way it is. It's boxing, and what someone's got to lose, I'm willing to put it on the line. I'm confident that I'll beat the pair of them. They're confident that they'll beat me and beat each other. So there's only one thing we can do, and you know, just just, just sort it out. And the last time um, I was talking with you, I was asking you when um, Macklin was due to face Sturm, if he was to win that title, what great fight it would be you and Macklin yeah. for the title in, in Ireland, maybe somewhere. Yeah. And uh, only a week later, they were both on. Um, Commenting on your fight with uh, there you go, Macklin, yeah. and they made a, a bit of a dig where they said that they didn't think you were on the same level. Well, exactly. How things have changed since yeah. then? Well, you, you know, the they, 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 they was both, they was both between themselves slagging me off on Tala. You know, it, it was it was my fight, my pretty title fight. They, they was in the studio saying, oh, he, he's not on our level, you know, and, and in, in the past six months we've all fought for the world title and I've come out on top, so I think it, it's them that looks a bit, uh, look a bit silly. Do you know what I mean? But I mean, Mac, Macklin, I wished him all the best for that stern fight, and I gen genuinely wanted him when I think you, you know it's better having a British world champion there than, than someone from Germany. And obviously I was thinking that I could get some good fights off back of it myself, but he, he you know he come back and he, he's just been saying all these stupid things in pre you know over Twitter, really childish things. You know what I mean? And I don't know what the problem is, so I had to love for straightening out this little problem because he's obviously got a problem with me, and I'd like to sort it out. Um, and you know you're, you're back in the gym now a couple of weeks since the stern fight. Um, What's it like for a boxer coming back into the gym, just having to tick over and around? And have you, it must be different to coming in, having a date and an opponent set. <coughs> yeah, tough. I mean, it's got. It's always hard when you start back, especially when you've had a break over Christmas because you, you're not fit. You know, you've put a bit of weight on, but it's um, uh, you know, a couple of weeks go past, and you know, uh, you know, the fitness starts, the fitness levels start rising, everything starts starting getting good, and I don't know. You, you're a bit gutted that you're not training for, for, for a day, but you're enjoying the training. You know, you're enjoying getting fit and knowing that, oh, I don't have to push for this time. So I'm just enjoying it at the minute. You know, I'm looking at around April and uh, I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm confident in whoever a fight will be. So I'm just, just looking forward to getting in there. Okay, well, that's Martin Murray's uh, take on the middleweight division. And we wish him all the best of luck and what lies in the future. So thanks very much. Thanks a lot, Thanks, mate. Thanks.